the display pipeline. As a UI developer, the UIs that we want to render onto the screen has to be first described in text. And there are varieties of ways of doing it. We can use XML-based languages like XAML or HTML to create those UIs declaratively or use imperative language-specific APIs to create them. We can also use drag and drop to visually create those UIs. Whatever would be the mechanism, ultimately these UIs have to be rendered onto the screen. So there's a translation that needs to happen where these textual UIs are first converted into a runtime object model, which is then rendered onto the screen. In this lesson, we'll focus a little more on that mystery red line, which really boils down to the display pipeline that is needed to translate an object model into a runtime bitmap, which is what the user ultimately interacts with. So let's open up that red box and delve into the world of the display pipeline. Now there are lots of activities that happen inside the display pipeline, and they all come together to ultimately generate a bitmap that the user interacts with. To make it easy to digest what's going on over here, we can segregate all of these activities into three distinct stages. Layout, painting, and compositing. Layout is the first of the three stages, and it really prepares the ground for the rest of the display pipeline. In short, layout is all about calculating rectangles, which is the size and position of the various rectangles that you see on the screen. And this includes gathering information from the font metrics, from the layout constraints that are established on the various components in your tree, and ultimately deciding what the visual tree should be within which we should be painting. Painting is where we fill up these rectangles, which could include the drawing information, images, videos, doing color space conversions, anti-aliasing of text, and rasterizing vectors. All of these result in filling the rectangles with content. The last stage is compositing, where you finally prepare the bitmaps and send it off to the GPUs for display. This is also the stage where we optimize for hardware acceleration. Normally we operate on these stages one by one, but there's one thing that can cut through all of them for every frame that you display on the screen, and that's animation. Because animation can operate on any of these properties cutting across all of these stages. So layout, painting, and compositing are the three distinct stages that operate sequentially, ultimately rendering the UI on the screen. Let's dig a little deeper into each of these stages, starting with layout. Before we can paint anything on the screen, we need to identify the location and the area in which we want to paint. And that's what the layout process helps us do. It's a top-down recursive process that goes depth first order and calculates the size and position of all of the rectangles. It works in two phases. In the first phase, it goes recursively down and asks each of its child to measure itself, given the parent's container size. And this phase is called sizing. In the second phase, we again go recursively down and this time calculate the positions of each of those rectangles, applying all the constraints for each of the components that we find in the tree. This phase is called positioning. And at the end of these two phases, we have the size and the position of all the rectangles on the screen. Of course, a UI is never static, and things can change anytime as represented by this blue rectangle. And when that happens, the layout phase repeats itself with those two phases, calculating a new set of rectangles, resulting in a change in the layout. Now this aspect of a UI is called invalidation, where any properties of the UI tree can change and re-trigger a new layout. So layout is a combination of sizing, positioning, and of course, invalidation. It starts with the sizing phase, moving into the positioning phase. And then anytime there's a change in any of the layout properties, invalidation happens and re-triggers the sizing. So the end of layout, we'll have the rectangles sized and positioned and ready for painting. And here comes the painting stage. We start with the premise that we have a rectangle that has been sized and positioned. So that means you have an XY coordinate, which is the location of the rectangle, and a width and height. The painting always happens back to front, just like a painter who paints a canvas with the background, midground, and the foreground. Similarly, we paint the background first, followed by the images and the graphics that come on top of it. Now this process of painting a rectangle is repeated for all the components in your UI tree. So this means we have to again recursively traverse down and paint each and every rectangle. But instead of doing that, we separate these two into a traversal and a display process by creating something called as a display list. With the display list, we do the traversal first and accumulate all the drawing commands that we need to do for all the rectangles that we have in the UI. And these commands respect the order of painting for each of the rectangles. Equipped with the display list, we can now power through the painting process and paint all of the rectangles that we have in the UI. 
By accumulating the commands into a list, we actually gain one more feature. Since we have a serialized set of commands, we can execute the painting process on any thread. Not just the main thread, but in a separate thread called the render thread. And this relieves the main thread of the painting process and gives back some CPU time. There is still some synchronization needed between the main thread and the render thread, but that is acceptable for the extra CPU time we are getting. And this also takes us closer to the UI that will run at 60 frames per second. So at the end of the painting process, we'll have a bitmap that's generated on the CPU. And that's the painting process in a nutshell. And finally, let's look at the last stage of the pipeline, compositing. Now historically, the role of the compositor, or the compositing stage itself, wasn't that prominent. But with the advent of GPUs, this has become a very important step in the pipeline. The UI as we know it is very dynamic in nature. And if you had to generate a bitmap every single time there's a change, that would tax the CPU quite a bit. We should really leverage the GPU, a processor specialized for doing graphics processing, right? And remove the whole bottleneck that is created between the CPU and the GPU. So let's look at how we can remove this bottleneck. Now, the UI that we have on the CPU is primarily a tree of components. And we paint all of these components into a bitmap or a graphics context and transfer it to the GPU. Anytime any of these components change, we would have to generate a new bitmap. In this case, the blue rectangles, when they transform, scale, or change opacities, you would have to generate a new bitmap and give it to the GPU. But notice something over here. Even though the blue rectangles are changing, the stuff behind them hardly changes, or never changes rather. The background elements just don't change. So why are we generating and paying the cost of redrawing and painting all of those rectangles when only the blue ones are changing? So what if, instead of generating a single bitmap, we actually generate four bitmaps? One for only the background elements and a bitmap for each of the blue rectangles. We can now send all of these bitmaps to the GPU instead of just one for any time there's a change. So going back to our previous example, when we're compositing for the first time, we would generate all four bitmaps and send it off to the GPU. Next time, when the blue rectangles change, we only generate the bitmaps for those blue rectangles and send it to the GPU. Interestingly, there's an observation or a key insight over here where we don't even have to generate bitmaps for certain kinds of UI changes. Especially ones where we are transforming or changing opacities, we can actually send GPU commands instead of bitmaps. And the GPU can take over the responsibility of transforming, scaling, rotating, and not even changing opacities. Because guess what? The GPU is a graphics processing powerhouse. And doing these things on the GPU is far more effective and quick compared to doing it on the CPU. Delegating such activities to the GPU is what we really mean by hardware acceleration. And a hardware accelerated UI is one where the compositing stage identifies the minimal set of layers or bitmaps that need to be sent to the GPU and doing the rest of the operations as GPU commands. And that is compositing in action. So layout, painting, and compositing are the three stages of your display pipeline that take the object model and translate it into a bitmap that can be generated and shown on the screen. And the pipeline can also optimize how these bitmaps are created so that the UI that you see on the screen is buttery smooth and hardware accelerated. So how is a pixel born on the screen? Well, it's through this process of layout, painting, and compositing, where we take a rectangle, we size it, position it, paint it, composite it, and finally render it on the screen through the power of hardware acceleration.